What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Bart Brigade Talk Show. Today we got Silent Mike, Nadim, and me, Bart. Have you guys been noticing? I don't know if, I mean, you've been in powerlifting way longer than I have, but have you been, is, is it a common day thing? Or is it like a, 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 a too late 2020 to 2023 thing where people are like pulling a thousand pounds now and it just seems so normal? I think uh, even scale that down to the average lifter that squats 500. How many people squat 500 now is stupid. Or the, uh, we even talked about in a previous episode, how many people bench 315 now? Like within our niche is so impressive and insane. So it's just, is it like, what do you think is causing just this whole shift in like standards? Oh, I got the answers. Yeah. So shout out to our boy Pug. Pug was joking, but me and Pug were going back and forth. And I think he was only half joking. Um, he's like, dude. The Florida in the water? It's the fluoride in the water. Yeah. Were you listening to us? Yeah. You're a freak. Oh, no, uh, Pug was basically saying, he's like, dude, uh, you guys didn't know shit about training back in the day, huh? I was like, no, we didn't. And, <laughs> and I was like, true. And I was like, bro, I walked so you could run, you little fuck. He's, That's very and, true. And Pug was like, dude, if you had my kind of training when you started at 19, you'd crush it, huh? I was like, yeah, probably, bro. Like I was just pulling heavy ass singles three times a day for shits and gigs, eating keto, <laughs> fucking sub maximal. BCAAs. Sub maximal just meant you're a pussy back then. Yeah. yeah, going nine for nine was like you were you didn't try hard. Yeah, it's like your your first attempt should already be on the fence of yeah. like almost. Even, or even shout out our boy Alberto Nunez to, to throw in a bunch of cool names. Alberto just posted a video the other day. He's like, my powerlifting friends are going to hate this, but remember it's 2010 in this video. And he posted himself doing a sumo deadlift in like a commercial gym. I think it might have been hex plates and he's rolling it into himself to do a sumo. It's just so ugly. And Alberto's known for being like super technical. He's like 2010, no one knew what was going on. I was just pulling weight. And so I think it's a matter of information, sharing information, a little bit of like real science and evidence-based stuff, but a lot of it's just great minds hanging out, podcasting, lifting together, spreading knowledge of programming. Gene pool what getting works. bigger. And then the second big factor is the genetic pool getting bigger. But that's my whole argument, not argument, but the whole debate I had with you guys where I was talking about is 315 like the new 225? Yeah. Right? And I kind of believe that because <clears throat> the access to knowledge and the greater amount of people that people are learning and learning from yeah. is way more. So you can get stronger, quicker, smarter, and safer than when we had it. If for you us, find the niche. That was my argument, if you want to go back to that. It's but because it's within powerlifting. And within powerlifting, but even the bodybuilders are getting smart about training. No, for sure, because they found bodybuilders to learn from. Yeah. Where fitness is so big, and that's what me and Bart were saying with that. Fitness, talent pool hasn't changed. Everyone lifts. But within powerlifting, more people are competing within the sport. And we can look at those numbers on the, uh, the memberships to the federations, and they're starting younger. The average age at the meets I run or the gym memberships I have is probably like 23. When I first started lifting, you know, it was like the common knowledge in the gym. And this is how, like how prehistoric it is. And this is even based on like Arnold's training. It was, you want to build a wide chest, you bench wide. If you want to hit inner chest, you bench close. Yeah. You want a big V taper. It's just, yeah. that's how like, without any real anatomical or like musculature knowledge, it was just how you lift is how you shape, how you like, uh, like shape a, your body. Dipping your toe into logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't want to get into logic. We just want to dip our toe into what logic. Yeah, so it's like. like you want wide lats? Yeah. It's like, dude, you've been doing pull-ups like this. Yeah. No wonder you don't have wide lats. It's gotta be all the way over here. Yeah. I also feel like because the sports has grown, when we did it, we did powerlifting because we had to do powerlifting where a lot of other people now are choosing powerlifting compared to other sports because it's fun. Yeah. It's like their favorite influencer. So when they're young, they're like, oh, the cool people that they're watching aren't the football players in this. They're watching people like <laughs> Russ or uh, whoever, any of these influencers. It was eye opening when we had the conversation with Russ and he was saying like, even though he made it to a D1 team, when he was on the field, all he could think about was the weight room. Yeah. And yeah, I was but, like, oh, But shit. even the fact that he made it on a D1 field yeah. versus like the guys I started powerlifting with, like kind of played high school football. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or even Dan, my Dan. Like Dan squatted over 800 pounds, pulled over seven. He was a D1 lineman. When I would wrestle in high school, other schools, and I would do like, when I would beat kids, and I was a little bit stronger than most, and I'm like, okay, we're kind of on the same level. We did, power, we did this sport because we we're trying to have fun. And then you get a motherfucker that just puts you and holds you down. And you're like, if that guy got into powerlifting. Yeah, it'd be over. Yeah, <clears throat> but 
he's going to be good and go somewhere with this. Yeah, right? I've made that argument, and it's still the same, right? We take a bunch of running backs from the NFL, and if the money was the same in powerlifting, but they're lifting more than us in the NFL. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you see them yeah, just yeah, yeah. shitty bouncing five plates no, off Chubb, their chest. Chubb in runners, no belt, no sleeve, squatted 675 to complete depth this summer. And he probably squats every once in a while now. What is he, like 16 or 17, one of those guys? No, he's uh, he's like uh, late 20s, but he's a f professional football player. Do you see that he's not a professional old, squatter. The 12-year-old football kid mm. that looks like he's 30, tatted everything too. <laughs> 12 year old. <laughs> he has maybe. a mustache, everything. And then, uh, the guy's like, how old are you? He goes, I'm 12. Yeah, maybe. You know? uh, it's insane. Imagine him. If we got him right. and we trained him smart without getting him injured, without fatiguing yeah. him. Without yeah, him. who knows where he'd go. He, he'd go insane. But the money's not there. The, the honor isn't there, right? America. he's going to the fun. NFL. Right. It, you'd yeah. much rather go to the NFL. Um, also, I think it's the same thing as the four-minute mile when you're talking about not everyone's trying to pull. Like, the mental barrier yeah. part. The mental barrier where it's like, hey, it is possible. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, on these specialized equipment, people are starting to break it because you're not. When, like, I first saw Dan Griggs. Oh. And then after that was like everybody. Yeah. Or even just the accessibility to, again, knowledge, but coaches. Every, like, I, you probably see it at Barbell too, but like, I would say 80% of the members at my gym all have a coach. Yeah. Bro, that wasn't a thing 10 years ago. 10 years ago, they, people you're thought you were- advice. People, and people thought you were wasting money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When like, there wasn't online coaching, yeah. you'd kind of find a program, you'd kind of have a methodology, or, or you'd all like, oh yeah, today we're just benching. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm benching. And so you just bench. You didn't have like a, oh, I'm doing three by two at this. And like the accuracy and the knowledge spread is so insane. Again, they're much younger. They're spending their money differently. They're spending their time differently, which I think is a great thing. Like hopefully these guys are taking it more serious, which I think is the benefit of this whole thing, right? You're allowing your mental to grow with it. You're not going out drinking every night. You're not doing drugs when you're 21 because you want to squat better and you got to wake up early to do that squat session. I so think it's it like made the, people the entire boring, environment. Though. It made people in training boring or uh the training itself no i i miss when we used to not be as strong but we would all train as a group because it doesn't like oh you got squats today you bench yesterday like I, fuck let's bench again i do today. agree the community although the as the individual will advance more the community gets a little bit fractured by it i agree yeah because otherwise all three of us would be like what are you doing you're, you're squatting hey bro let's squat rather than oh man i squatted yesterday yeah. my coach has my squat tomorrow that's what's kind of cool about crossfit gyms yeah. they have like the workout of the day i agree so everyone comes in whether I it's agree. a three-person class 30 person class, everyone's doing the yeah. same shit and it's fun together. Do you think if we took the specificity and like individual training to a CrossFit gym and you had those, what everyone's doing compared to individual programs, that individual program person would excel way more? I think so. I think the yeah. community and pushing each other is more important than the 10% variability that we need in our programming. And I'll, I'll, I'll die on that. Cause cross. that's what makes the football freaks, the football freaks, right? Like the football freaks, after they come off the field, Coach goes, today's squat day. Yep. Doesn't matter if you squat 135 or 700 pounds, everyone's loading up weight, everyone's squatting, yep. and everyone's cheering and pushing each other on. And that environment is what produces the 16 year olds that are squatting 700 pounds. Yeah, the truth is, and, and some of these coaches might get mad about it, but the individual individuality within programming and individuality within uh, nutrition, the variance from human to human is so minor. I, I, I've, and people used to hate on me because you know I sell some templates online, although I don't push them much. People argue that templates aren't good, that you need individual coaching, but it's not true. Like you, yeah. you at the maybe at the very top because someone like a Russ versus like a Bob at the or top, something. Yeah. But even then, I think the variance is so little. Like oh, Russ does a little bit better when he deadlifts twice a week versus three times. But even within <clears throat> that, it's so minor. Yeah, if you take if you take the the shittiest athlete and then have them be coached by Shaco for a year versus someone that doesn't miss a meal, miss sleep, miss training, right. the most insane, most disciplined athlete with a 24 hour trainer, this guy will smash the other yeah. motherfucker. I, I, in, in, in the pyramid of what matters, genetics, consistency, then I would probably say like community and culture and then maybe programming. There's how many guys have been insanely strong, the best in the world and probably still hold world records to this day that squat once a week. Where if you look at science and you ask any coach, you know that squatting once a week probably isn't the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if someone's just on a, if they just buy a program uh, from someone that's at least decent and knows what they're doing, not just someone that like, because you get like bodybuilding programs that are just like Right, various. there's variance, yeah. 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 Um, but like a powerlifting program, everyone's so like, kind of like you're saying, everyone's like, you have to be on an individual coach, like individual program. Like that doesn't matter as much and most people can't afford that because yeah. it gets really expensive. And the, the biggest thing is just, are you training and are you not doing stupid stuff to yep. 
like get you injured or fatigued. Yeah, not sleep and alcohol, all this stuff. But uh, yeah, I think the community aspect is the last missing piece to really make powerlifting the, one of the most special sports in the world. I already think it is because you can learn so much about yourself and how you think. Build a goal, build a plan, follow plan, hit goal is such like a basic archaic thought process that can work in business, work everywhere. I would say like um, when me and Nadim were like really actively competing and really getting after it, probably one of the strongest times in our lives, it was because we had a whole crew. Yeah, and you just train together. We come in, yeah. we take over the gym, there's fucking 10, 15, yeah. 20 of us, and you're just going fucking ham the whole fuck. Like every, yeah. every training session was like a meet. Yeah. One, one person squats, 10 people are cheering, the other person squats, 10 people it's are so cheering. so special. Yeah, you're just getting fucking after And it. you can still like get aspects at that if you're at the right gym, because the gym has that culture. Although we're doing different things at Third Street and Barbell, you can still kind of get that. Um, but I do think that's the one missing piece to take this sport to the Rockets. Did you have something you want to say? I was also on steroids. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs>